Hello there. Back so soon, huh? What's up? This is Mr. Martin. Boom. 1.5. Multiplying polynomials. We are in the good one. Okay, today we are going to multiply using one of my favorites, the laws of exponents. And we're going to do a little bit of CLT, some combining like terms. Okay, so we are multiplying polynomials. Great section, great section. Let's jump into it. These are our things to know, okay? We have what we call the product rule for exponents, okay? And this states that if you have the same variable base, that you will add the exponents. So like an x times an x, right? They both have a one, right? If I have an x times an x, these are both ones. We add them up after multiplying the same base. We add the exponents up. We are good. Okay. The other thing that we're going to talk about are some uh, special case binomials. Uh, we have what we call perfect squares. And then we also have another one called the difference of squares. And these are kind of good to get a little bit of heads up on right now. Because you will see these in the future. Uh, I'm going to show them to you. So I know you'll see them in the future. All right, not much vocab today, so let's jump straight into it. We have example number one. We already know what a monomial is. We are going to multiply a monomial with a monomial. You have probably already done this before. Now I'm just throwing in all these extra coefficients and a couple extra variables. So our steps tell us the first thing we want to look at and do, make sure you multiply the coefficients of the monomials. If your monomial has a coefficient, those coefficients need to be multiplied as well. And like always, do not forget those signs. Okay, so we have this monomial 2a squared times another monomial 3a to the fourth, b to the fourth. So remember, uh, I said we need to multiply those coefficients. So my coefficients are 2 and 3. I multiply those together, I'm going to get that 6. Okay. The other thing we need to do is multiply the variables and then add their exponents if they're the same base only. So if I have an a to the 2 times an a to the 4, I'm going to write this one out just on this first example here just so you can actually see what's going on. What we're doing is we are adding this 2 and this 4. And then do we have a b to multiply this b to? We do not, so we just stick them together like this. And then this is going to go down to 6a. What is 2 plus 4? That gives me a 6. And then I have a b to the fourth. All right, fairly simple, right? Multiplying coefficients, adding up the exponents. Remember, I said this thing about signs also. So here if I have a negative and I'm multiplying to only a positive in here, there's no other negative signs, that means our end result will indeed be a negative. So I can write that negative sign there. I have a coefficient of this negative 1 times a 3. That's what gives me a negative 3. And then I have a x to the 1 and a x to the 4. I add those up and I'm going to get this x to the 5. Boom. So simple. So simple. I think you guys maybe have it already. Let's do one more. I'm going to have you pause and do the last one. So we got a negative times a negative, right? If you only see two of them, right, then that means they are going to multiply and turn into a positive. We have this coefficient of a three times a one, so I should be starting with a three. J to the two times J to the two will give me a J to the four. And then I also have this K to the three. All right, boom, box it up. She's done. It's a wrap. All right, go ahead, pause the video here. Try this next one out on your own. Come back and see what I got. All right, welcome back. I know you paused it because that's what I asked you to do. And hopefully you got something like this. All right, remember, we do have that community property. So if you had the Z's first, X, Z, or Z, X, Y, whatever order those are in, um, that is okay. Traditionally, we leave the uh, coefficient out on the left right we don't want to put that on the right okay so this looks good all right hopefully we are okay with monomial times a monomial all right 
Now, for example, number two, we are gonna multiply a monomial times a polynomial. So we kind of have the same steps. Um, we just have this little extra one. Remember, we should be putting in standard form. The reason why this is important with a monomial times a polynomial, because we now have what? More than one term. All right, so we want to distribute just like we did before, multiplying variables and adding exponents. Uh, but this is kind of like our previous lesson where we did uh, distribution, okay? So now if we wanted to, we could do this little rainbow, right? 7x squared times 7x, a 7 and a 7 multiply to give me a 49. x to the 2 plus a 1 will give me x to the 3. And then here I have a 7 times a positive 4 for a positive 28. And then just my x to the 2 since there's no other x to multiply right here. Very good. All right, let's do one more together because I like doing these. 3a times negative 8a. You see how I said that? I know I got a 3 times a negative, so I'm going to end up with a negative. 8 times 3 gives me that 24 I'm looking for. A times A gives me A to the 2. All right. Now I got a positive 3A times a B. Let's put those little rainbow, upside down rainbows right there. 3A times B. That's just going to give me 3AB. That's it. Sometimes you can't add the exponents because the bases are the same. And sometimes you don't have a coefficient to multiply to. Okay. And that's okay. You just got to look for what you got and what you're uh, actually trying to do. All right, you know the drill. Pause this one, try it on your own, see how well you did. All right, welcome back. Hopefully after you did your multiplication, you ended up with something like this. I'm gonna go ahead and box it up. This is what we should have. Uh, you might have been asking yourself, how do we put this in standard form? We got a two and a one, which is a three, a two and a one is a three, and a three is a three. So they're all the same degree term, so we can actually just leave it in this uh, form right here, left to right as we saw it, and that will be okay. All right, moving on. We have example number three. Now we are into the tough stuff. We got polynomials times polynomials. You may have seen something like this before, maybe not. Don't worry, I'm gonna help you get through it. We just have this extra little step right here. Now we might see something uh, like like terms, okay? And we wanna combine those at any time possible because we always want to simplify. So we can do the rainbow technique and then we can also do the box method or technique or however you wanna call it. Uh, for these two examples, I'm going to show you the uh, rainbow because uh, I did put some box examples on your notes there. So let's go ahead and rainbow. What we want to do though is we want to distribute by multiplying the coefficients and the signs, multiply the variables, and then combine like terms. But here on the outside, we have two terms distributing into two terms. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually double distribute. Okay, so maybe you want to write this in here, but we just need to do it twice. And we always start with this one here, and we're going to rainbow to both of these. So what I'm going to do is 5n times positive 3n, that's going to give me a 15n squared. Then I'm going to do again the same term, 5n times this outside term, times a positive 3, which is a... 15n okay now just so it maybe helps a little bit I'm gonna do the second distribute in a different color we got a negative 1 times a positive 3n which is a minus 3n and then a negative 1 times a positive 3 for a negative 3 okay when you have these binomials times binomials 9.9 uh, .9 times out of 10 and I say that because with math anything can happen your middle terms are gonna be the ones that are your like terms if you haven't noticed by now we got our squared term up top we got these two that are alike 
and then we got our constant at the end here. So let's go ahead and combine these. Uh, well, first let's drop this down, this 15n squared. Then we got a 15n minus a 3n for a positive 12n, and then a minus 3 drops down. Very good. And if you can see, we are in standard form. All right, let's do our double distribute for the second one. We got a 3v times a 6v for a 18v squared. And then we have a, oops, 18v squared. We have a 3v times a negative 5 for a minus 15v. And then we got a 5 times a 6v for a plus 30v and a 5 times negative 5 for a minus 25. All right, we're going to combine these like terms after we drop this down. Negative 15 plus 30 for a positive 15v. And then we got the minus 25. All right, so far so good. I think you guys might be good enough to try one on your own. Let's see what the next page has. All right, here we have the box. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, do the box together and then uh, I'll let you guys try the next two. Uh, this one, you actually do have a binomial times a trinomial, which will be good for you to try on your own. So let's do this one. So I'm gonna put the 3p right here and a positive seven. And I'll do this one in red. I'll do a 2p and a positive six. And maybe I'll do blue in the middle here. So let's do find our area, right? Length times width, 3p times 2p is a 6p squared. 3p times a positive 6 is a positive 18p. Positive 7 times 2p is a 14p. And then we have 7 times 6, which is 42, if my math is correct. Positive 42. All right, very good. Now we want to look for our like terms. Well, we got a p squared, we got a constant. Looks like we got these two guys right here. So let's drop down what we know in standard form already. We got a 6p squared. Then we want to add these two up, right? Because they're both positive. We got a 14 plus an 18 for 32, I believe. And then we have this plus 42 on the outside. All right, pretty, pretty good. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video here. I'm gonna let you guys try these two on your own and then uh, pop back in and see what I got. All right, welcome back. So for letter K, okay, I distributed this out. Double distribute, first term times each three terms, then second term times each three terms. And then I went in and combined all these guys. So I ended up with this 12a cubed minus 18a squared plus 16a minus 5. Okay, so we ended up with four terms. Who knows what this is called? Just for fun, this is a cubic polynomial. And I am in standard form. I am counting down. All right, in the second one, you should have tried the box method. I gave you the box. Um, and if you look, there is this little pattern of these guys going like that as far as uh, what you can combine. All right, so we ended up with, again, a cubic polynomial. So hopefully you got those values correct. All right, so we got our last part here also. These are our special case binomials. This first one being a perfect square. What this means is if you have a grouping square, do not let this fool you. We are not distributing this exponent to each of those terms. That is a big mathematical no-no. What we are doing is we are saying, hey, this entire group is being squared. So if you think of something, what is something being squared, right? Uh, let's do 2 squared, right? We know that 2 squared is 2 times 2, right? So something times itself. And in this case, the itself 
is the 2x minus 3. So what we need to do is we need to rewrite this as 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. It is the entire group times itself. And if we do our double distribute, we're going to get 4x squared minus 6x. And then we do it again and get minus 6x plus 9, combining our like terms for a final solution of 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. All right. So just remember, you are squaring the entire group. Okay, and the difference of squares, right? Difference we know is subtraction, so this should lead you to understand that our end result will have something showing the difference of, and this is actually an almost uh, square binomial. We have an x, we have an x, we have a 4, we have a 4. The only key things here are the opposite signs. Uh, in our binomials and this is a very unique uh, binomial uh, and like I said you will see this in the future so it is good to know and kinda good to see what actually happens here so let's uh, multiply these binomials we got x times x for x squared then we have a minus 4x and we do it again here and we get a plus 4x and a minus 16. So if we look for our like terms in the middle, this time they actually cancel themselves out. And here we have x squared minus 16 is our final result. And if you look, x squared is a perfect square. It is an x times an x. 16 is a perfect square, which means it is the result of a 4 times 4. And then we have that minus sign right there, which indicates our difference. So keep an eye out for these special case binomials. You will be seeing them time to time. And like I said before, try the coursework. If you have any questions at all, please come to me. Ask a friend, ask a family member, ask a teacher. Somebody is willing to help you. I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and I hope you guys are able to master it. I will catch you on the next one. This is Mr. Martin. Peace out.